this is the most important video I will probably do before the Madden Classic. What's up guys, my name's Cody and I want to thank you for watching this video. Now if you're new to the channel and you don't know what my channel is about, my channel is all about becoming a better Madden player in Madden 21. I try to share with you pretty much everything that I know. I try to share with you all of the glitches that I know, all the counters to that stuff. I try to learn everything that I can from other people as well. Um, and one of the things that I have been really labbing hard is the cover four quarters defense. We're going to talk about that in just a second. But before we do, if you have, let's say you're new to the channel, if you haven't subscribed yet, it's completely free to subscribe, and that allows you to know whenever we release new videos. We do tips every single day. We do about eight of these a day um, where we just break down something in the game. And today I'm actually really, really excited. I've been labbing like crazy, and I love – I'm a lab rat. I love labbing. So uh, labbing is just practicing and testing out things uh, in the game. And so today we're going to share with you um, – the bag for gun bunch and this took a ton of energy it probably took me about seven hours yesterday to put together and really get it to where we want it to be um, as far as a gun bunch defense that you can use heading into the Madden Classic now that we expand on this defense in our defensive guide if you want to get the defensive guide it's in the description um, it's the best defense in the game. You're able to play match. You're able to play zone. You're able to play zone drops. You're able to play. You're able to blitz. You're able to use a rush. You're able to stop the run. Everything you want to do in a defense, the nickel three three five wide offers that to you. And so, anyways, I just wanted to dive in here, and I want to specifically talk about a couple of things that people are going to do from the gun bunch and how to counter them. So, really quickly, I want to walk you through my coaching adjustments. I have auto flip on. Auto alignment to default. Now, if they come out in trips tied in, um, shout out to Zan. I've been man aligning. Uh, Zan is a lab rat as well, a super big innovator. I have so much respect for his Madden knowledge, especially on the defensive side of the ball. And he's been doing this, I think, since like August. I mean, this guy was way ahead of the curb on the man align. And, and as you can see, so so if, I, if it's trips, I man align. I've actually been testing man align against a lot of stuff. Um, I'm not quite sure that it's the best against every formation um, because for whatever reason, sometimes the assignments will glitch out. But I think it's very good against trip side in. And I'm not quite sure how it goes against bunch yet. I'm still testing that a little bit. So for right now, I'm going default. Ball and air defense to play receiver. Cornerback matchups are on balance. Please, 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 please don't do anything else. At least I don't know how to help you fix it if it's by depth chart or by speed. or I, I don't know how to help you fix that. Um, and I, I just, I just, some people put it by speed, but I've tried it and it just doesn't work for me. Option defense conservative. And then everything else is on default. You cannot set zone drops for this. Um, you you cannot you cannot set zone drops for this. Okay, um, it says right here during pre-play return zone drops to default by using the sticks feature. I have not been able to get that to work when you audible into the match from another play. So, you know, I don't I don't know. I'm still testing that. If I can get that to work, I will do a video on it. But anyways. Um, nickel 335 wide, the audible we're going to set is cover 4 show 2. It is a secret hidden play in the 335 wide. It looks like cover 4 drop, right? That's what I thought it was. It's actually cover 4 quarters, and that's huge. That's huge because now you have a match defense from a nickel 335 defense, which is, which is really cool. So you're going to be able to get really good personnel on the field. Um, obviously, we come out in 335 normal and we audible into it. So let's just dive in here. And I want to share with you two routes that are the problems out of Gun Bunch. The first one, this is just stock cover four quarters. The first one is clear out SE out. We did a video on this earlier. Literally, all you're going to do is you're going to put Devonta Adams on out route and you're going to outside pass late circle. And voila. I mean, you burn cover four quarters. And now you can put in the comments how much you hate me for giving you the advice to run this defense, right? That's what you can do, right? That's it. I mean, if you want to get our whole bunch system, um, that's in our text message membership. Shoot me a text message. My number's in the top left-hand corner of the screen, right? That That's that's what that happens. Same thing with Flood, okay? I don't have to do anything. I just call Flood. That's it. And watch. Voila, another one-play touchdown over the top. Cover four quarters sucks, right? That's what you're probably thinking. It doesn't. It doesn't suck. Bunch is the hardest, in my mind, 
I've 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 labbed this Cub for quarters against pretty much everything. I've labbed it against eye tight, eye close, strong close, strong wing, everything you can think of. The hardest but offense for me to consistently stop is gun bunch until last night. Last night I figured out an incredible adjustment and it actually came to us for the bunch tied in, but it's going to cross apply over to the gun bunch. So when I was in lab yesterday, I noticed that um, one of the things that I like to do out of the cover four quarters is essentially user the middle linebacker. Okay. So I like to use this guy. So that means that I need another three rec hook. So the most obvious thing to do in my mind is to take the linebacker on the right side and bluff blitz him. And that gives you a three rec hook. The problem is, and, and I'm thinking in my head mentally like, oh, the three rec hook will take the, take the tight end, right? That's what I'm thinking. Or he'll take Devontae Adams, and now there won't be an issue. Well, if you watch, that adjustment does practically nothing. <laughs> Does literally practically nothing. As you can see, the three red hook guards nobody, and as you can see, it's over the top. So the three red hook to me, out of cover four quarters, at least in this scenario, is wasteful. There's no reason to have it on the field, and I'm not saying there's no reason to have it in general. I'm just saying for the problem that we're trying to solve right now, which is the the streak that's beaten us for 70 yards over the top of the screen, we need to figure something out. I also do not ever, 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 ever out of cover four quarters, and this is my pet peeve when people run match coverage, um, I personally don't want to have to change the outside safeties. So what I mean by that is I don't want to have to put a deep half on the field because because here's the problem. Here's the, here's the problem with that. Let's say you put a deep half on the field. They put an in route to the backside receiver because he's playing so, or um, I think it's called special. I don't know exactly the terminology, but he's playing man coverage. I know that the left side guy will always play man coverage out of cover for quarters. He will always man up the solo receiver against the trip set. So they put an in route to 13, and then they take the tight end and put him on a crosser, and now what are you going to do? Right, you're lost because because now if we take this guy and put him in inside third, now we're screwed. If we take this guy and put him in a, in a deep half, and then they have two streaks, you can just when you start ad adjusting the base shell, you better really know what you're doing because it, it can get really bad for you really really quickly um, if you go that route. And I've gone that route, and and, and I've taken the losses as a result. So what I did, what I did was actually a secret adjustment, and 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 it's it's honestly super simple. And I was talking in a Discord with some guys about it. And if you haven't joined our Discord, that's in the description. But basically, what we found and what we were kicking ourselves laughing about is it's the simplest adjustment ever. But essentially, what it does is it teaches the law, it it fixes the logic of the cover four defense. What I mean by that is, let's say that you are. Um, and I actually found this on a bunch tied in, but let's, let's say that, let's say that your logic says on cover course, you can look at it. Um, let me pull up the defense for you so you can see it. So Jair Alexander is an outside quarter, right? So if that circle receiver goes vertical, Jair Alexander should take him. Now, what if they swap, swap off, right? The swapping of the zones is where it gets complicated. So what if the right side safety um, you know what if, if r1 runs an out route now the right side technically he's gone quote unquote vertical because he's gone five yards so the right side safety is trying to decide do I go guard Devonte Adams or do I go guard Tavon Austin and when you're trying to decide something in the middle of a play unfortunately sometimes that can get the coverage blown off and that's exactly what happens out of flood it's the same thing is that Jair Alexander kind of squats onto the out route because it's a it's a vertical route and then essentially Tavon Austin gets over the top. So essentially what's happening is we need a plus one advantage, right? When you're running trips tight end, if you think about trips tight end, trip, and I think trips tight end is a lot easier to stop with this specific defense. Um, and I could be wrong on that and we're going to get in the lab and learn a little bit, but, but, but Trips tight end, if you think about it, there's three wide receivers on the left, but they're all spread out. They're all spaced out. So when they swap, when they naturally swap like a corner streak combo or something like that, the corners have more time to adjust to that. When it's bunch, they're swapping like that. I mean, they are swapping quick. And so you 
have to be prepared for that. So here's here's the adjustment. Again, it's the simplest thing in the world, but if you think about gun bunch and a lot of the routes that they're going to put the circle receiver on, this is going to bag the whole entire offense. I'm telling you right now. So here's how you do it. Again, I mean, you're going to laugh at me when you hear this, but I, I just don't think people do this. All you're going to do, the only adjustment, is you're going to man up the linebacker on the outside receiver. That's it. I know it's simple. That is literally all you have to do. And then essentially all you're going to do on the back side of this is um, Aaron Jones is a little bit of a problem because he has backfield mismatch or about whatever it's called. I think it's I don't even know what it's called. I think it's running back master. I don't even know what it's called. But anyways, he's going to get open against this quarter. So what you're going to do is you're going to you're going to put this quarter. You can either put him into a hard flat. What I personally like to do is I like to put you know one of these three guys into a hard flat. Okay, or I like to play essentially a cover six so I'll take Nickerson put him in a put him in a soft squat and put him in a deep half and then I'm going to use her the middle you can do that as well um, I'm not going to say I don't want to again I but again I don't want to talk too much about adjusting the back end of this I just want to simply focus right now on the trip side uh, and the bombing and we'll deal with the running back in just a, in, in maybe another video we don't even need to deal with him right now but basically there's a lot of things you can do to stop the option route you can use it you could put a if you put a flat route and a yellow route there you've taken it away so you could easily do that with those with those guys so the bottom line here I'm going to run clear out exactly the way I ran it for the one-play touchdown. I just want you to watch what happens. And the biggest thing that you could do is pass commit also. You need that linebacker to jump into coverage on him quick so that he can't get over the top of it. And as you'll see here, the man coverage goes up. And uh, right there, Tavon got over to the top. And I, and I need to make sure that that – ideally that's either Savage or Redman. Uh, or not Savage. But either Ideally that's Amos. Uh, in this example, it's going to be Redmond. Uh, Redmond, unfortunately, isn't the fastest person on the field, but um, it'll be fine. So anyway, that's that's the circle receiver. So now let's go to Flood for a second. Same concept. Now watch. Circle receiver gets manned up up the top, and he hangs with him, and I'm trying to get it out there, and I can't get it over the top of him. Perfect. Now you're like thinking maybe in the comments, well, that's obvious. Of course, you manned up the one issue, the, the one problem player of the entire offense. Not so. So I've played some people that will actually bomb quarters from the slot, okay, from the slot. So what they'll do is they'll go into maybe clear out and they'll streak Devontae Adams up the seam. And what you'll see here, same thing. Watch Devontae Adams. Watch, 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 watch. You see that right there? That gets taken as well because of the match because of, because of that adjustment. That what what's happening is that one adjustment of manning up this guy. Now let's say you're in the linebacker position and you see Devontae Adams go deep. You might want to follow him. You might want to follow him. Um, but what I want you to know is what this logic is telling the safeties is telling that middle safety in the middle of the field that 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 is pretty much the issue in this defense. It's telling him that you don't have to worry about the circle receiver because we've covered him in man coverage. All you have to worry about is the tight end and the slot receiver. So now if either one of those two go, the safety should almost always go with him. You'll see here, motion this out. Now the one issue is sometimes that safety will take, as you saw right there, sometimes the safety will take the tight end. That's another another little bit of an issue. So that's why I say, you know, against Gun Bunch, you want to either man up the tight end or you want to man up the outside guy. And and, and it can honestly, um, you know, it can, you, you might even want to man them up, both up, um, you know, to, to just simply take care of it. But, again, what I would do is just man this guy up on the slot. You can put this guy in an inside third if you want, if you really feel like that's what you need to do. Another little trick about cover four quarters is if you bring these guys in, they actually play a lot better when you bring them in. So if you create like almost like a stack look here, um, this will help it a ton. And you'll see right here. See, see now he plays him. All I did was drag him in. That's all I did. 
All I did was drag him in, but it made a huge difference. And that's lab work. That is testing. That is time. That is practice. And I cannot stress to you enough how much I want you guys to learn um, this stuff and get in the lab because this makes a huge difference. This is this right here. Let me just show you. Let me just show you what I'm talking about. Let me just show you. So I'm going to run this play, and I want you to. I want you to think about this. This is. Let's say that this is um, first and ten. Two minutes left to go in the game. Um, you're losing by three points, and you need to get a stop. And you need the ball back, and it's fourth and five, okay, or whatever, and they're going to go for it, okay? Here we go. Snap the ball. Watch what happens. If you adjust this way, if you adjust this way, there's a decent chance that that could be uh, caught. Obviously, right there it wasn't, but it, there's a chance that it could be caught because there's a window to throw it. Let me show you this one more time. And again, I just want you to think about the situation, right? We want to have these. This is why labbing is so important, because you want to know, can I count on this? Is this consistent? That's what, that's what labbing is all about. That's what practice, what reps is all about. And again, if you watched Devontae Adams right here, that's what we're talking about. So can you rely on this? As you can see right here, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. So what do you do? Again, back to the lab work for just a second. All we're going to do... These little tweaks make such a big difference. Pinch our defense. And then we're going to bring these guys in over the tackles. That's it. And then we're manning up that circle receiver. That's all we're doing. Now watch. Same combo. Nothing's changed. Watch Devontae Adams. Right into quarters. Right into them. The placement of those quarter zones is ever so important. I cannot stress to you enough how important it is that you move them into the box if you want them to play really, really well. They will play glitchy if they're in the box. If they're not in the box, they won't. They will. They will flip out. I don't know why, but they will flip out. And I've seen it time and time and time and time again. As you can see right there, matches onto him perfectly and does his job up the seam. Now, if you wanted to put him on the inside third, you can. Feel free to do that. I'm not trying to say you can't do that. I'm just simply saying, you know, I would I would start with this, you know, and, and see if you can make this work. Now, you know, let's say that they're running, you know, bench pivot. Um, if I was if I was trying to, to bomb something like this, I would probably have that there. And again, this is just a show. Um, you know, again, get out here, watch that outside quarter, watch him. He ain't going up. So now you have an outside pass lead. Now, and that's Aaron Rodgers. So to me, that's risky. Um, I don't want to live like that. So anyways, that is cover four quarters a little bit more on bunch. There's going to be more stuff coming out about that. I'm sure people are going to start talking about this defense a lot. But this is the best defense right now, um, in my opinion, for bunch, for trips tight end, for anything. You can run this cover four quarters against pretty much anything, and it does a really good job against a lot of the routes that are very difficult to defend. Um, if you mix this in with man coverage and mix this in with zone drop coverage, right, Mabeling, this, these three core defenses will be tough to beat in the classic, in my opinion. So I want to thank you for watching this video. If you want to get a free sample to my 335 wide ebook, that link is in the description of this video. Now, if you want to get the full ebook, or I'm sorry, that link is in my text membership. So you have to text me for that. My number is in the top left hand corner. It's free to text me and it's free to get that video. If you want to get the full defensive guide, that link is in the description of this video. It shows everything that I do from 335 wide. shows you how to stop the run. shows you how to stop the pass. shows you how to stop the, the best things that people are going to do. So if you want to get that, that's in the description as well. Thanks for your time. I appreciate it. And if you want to see me run this defense tonight on stream, I will be streaming at 10 p.m. Eastern time. Thanks for your time, and have a great rest of your day.